Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the latest Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker. It came out last weekend. It's receiving mixed reactions, to say the least. In addition, its box office performance has been pretty disappointing for Disney as well, especially for a Star Wars movie and one that's completing their first trilogy, no less. And as this film seems to flounder, and it's certainly getting its ass handed to it by the critics, well, it appears the social justice warriors who once supported this franchise with vigor and wholeheartedly will well, they're now trying to abandon ship. Radical leftists, especially feminists, previously championed these movies heavily too. Obviously because Disney was trying to pander to them with their diverse casting and their overuse of female leads. But with this new movie, The Rise of Skywalker appears to be turning those same SJWs against the series now, for a number of odd and, quite frankly, hilarious reasons. And while I've already given the film a pretty complete review in my last Star Wars video, shitting on it for the most part, so today, it's not really about defending the Rise of Skywalker because it was a good movie. It wasn't. Really, today's about calling out how ridiculous these progressive attacks against it really are. And also, it's funny how quick the left turned against this series which they supported for years. Really shows how fickle and ready to eat their own these leftists actually are. The first story I've got for you today is one of four instances I've found that particularly made my head turn this week. We'll get to how Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker triggered some later, and also how Kelly Marie Tran's Rose Tico character is coming up again recently, and also how someone's upset the stormtroopers were black too, but first, let's talk about how a certain advertisement tied in with this movie has some feminists losing their shit. This article from the Daily Wire has more details. It's called Feminists Freak Out After GE Appliances Launches Star Wars Ad Campaign to Sell Home Appliances. This should be good. Let's go ahead and check it out. The president of Lucasfilm once posed in a shirt that said the force is female in an effort to press the idea that the Star Wars films are meant to be shared with female fans. And The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson made a special effort to include strong female characters, even if it meant sacrificing purpose, storyline, and likability. But now some feminists on social media are seeing red about The Rise of Skywalker. And not just because the ninth installment of the Skywalker Star Wars saga, directed this time by J.J. Abrams, reportedly returns to the fan service roots of The Force Awakens, but because Lucasfilm has inked a partnership with GE Appliances, using Star Wars' four strong female leads to sell microwaves ovens, refrigerators, and other kitchen appliances. The Twitter account at Undoomed first pointed out the weird yet hilarious irony of the GE appliances, Fulfill Your Destiny campaign. Then below that, Undoomed says, The force is female, fulfill your destiny with these stoves. And well, that's pretty much spot on and really freaking hilarious. This is certainly a big oversight for Disney and Star Wars right here. First saying the force is female and going feminist and girl power really doesn't mesh well with selling stoves for your kitchen, a kitchen which feminists have been fighting for women to come out of for decades. This is also ironic on its own since many women do actually enjoy using their kitchens and they enjoy cooking and baking and organizing in there too, which is a common preference for many ladies, but feminists just don't like that. They want women to be working ladies now who never get married or have kids or cook because they claim careers and serving corporate overlords is more fulfilling. Yeah, right. Research has shown otherwise too, as many women actually feel more fulfilled by getting married and having kids, but that's besides the point for today. Day. Really, this GE promotion Star Wars is going with, saying choose your destiny above these stoves, is what's really causing the mess today. And it's part of the greater problem the left is having with this movie too. As the article stated, since Star Wars is turning back and letting up on the feminism a bit, the SJWs are naturally getting upset because apparently they demand to be pandered to wholly and completely and at all times. That's why SJWs like Lee here on Twitter, they are getting noticeably miffed by this new GE stove promotion too. Next, let's move on to another Another way this movie is getting attacked by SJWs recently. This time it's coming from a tweet by an account called Star Wars Shadow Council. It says, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker glorifies abuse and assault against women. Well that's an interesting take surely. I hope they're not just getting upset because the female lead in this movie had to fight people. That would be weird, but not exactly surprising in this day and age. Let's read on into the attached article here and see where this thing goes. On Friday, December 6th, a timely two weeks before the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Disney issued a warning that certain scenes in the film would contain flashing lights and may negatively affect those with photosensitive epilepsy. While the announcement was admirable and demonstrated a gesture of goodwill from the company to consumers, there's another warning needed for Rise that the company didn't disclose, that the film romanticizes abuse and assault against women. It is important to note that the descriptions following technically qualify as spoilers for the new film that debuts in theaters today on Friday, December 20th. However, when it comes to the portrayal of serious, harmful, and triggering 
boring content, the safety of viewers should be more important than allowing oneself to be surprised while watching a film. Not all surprises are enjoyable. Jeez, tone it down a bit, buddy. He acts like he's saving the world with this article here. And also, let me see if I got this whole thing correct. Some people said there weren't enough strong female heroes in popular media, and then the largest media franchise in history creates a strong female hero in Star Wars called Rey. And now, those same people that were arguing for this and wanted more female heroes, they're also against them being abused by the villains of the story. Wow, you really can't make this kind of bullshit up. First, it's not enough female leads and now there's females, but they can't have any challenges or villains to fight in the movie. Because I guess that's too mean or abusive to women? What a joke. And what kind of movie are these SJW people expecting them to make anyway? I don't know if they realize this, but watching a girl stroll around through a movie and not face any threats or challenges would be boring as hell. Not to mention they're gutting the stories and the fun and using their suggestions would make a movie that would totally bomb, even worse than Rise is right now. In order to inform what is meant by abuse and by stating that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker promotes unhealthy myths about abusive behavior, work from a specialist in domestic abuse, Lundy Bancroft's 2002 book, Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men, will be utilized as a guide to understand how Kylo Ren is abusive, how Rey is his victim, and how The Rise of Skywalker romanticizes abuse by portraying the myth that fixing an abusive man is the ultimate responsibility for a vulnerable young woman. The abusive character in the film, apt to real-life abusers, has two names, two personalities, a Jekyll and Hyde, as if to represent his kind side and his abusive side, Kylo Ren and Ben Solo. The abusive victim has only one name, Rey. While they portray the role of abuser and abuse throughout all three films, neither of the previous two films went so far in pushing the myth that abuse is romantic, and that the abuse victim must forgive and fall in love with her abuser than did the Rise of Skywalker. Therefore, this analysis will only describe his abusive behavior as they occur in the latest film. Oh, please. Let's not act like this article is going to give us some big and important and intellectual analysis here. Come on. They watched a Star Wars movie and got triggered by it, and now they're pretending they didn't just not like the movie, but it was also intentionally offensive and abusive to females when it's really not. I'll even go along with it up until the end there, too. They're right about Kylo Ren being abusive to the Rey character. That's obvious, and even him having two names and a dual personality was pretty accurate here, too. But as for romanticizing that abuse and saying the abuse should help and fall in love with their abusers or whatever, that's where we get way off course. Really, Kylo was just the villain, so of course he was being mean and abusive and manipulative of Rey. That's just how this movie and many others work. The real issue here is, SJWs like this are so protective of women now, they can't even accept them being attacked in fictional settings. So this guy then comes up with his armchair therapist, pseudoscience, made up bullshit way to justify a butthurt feeling he already had. Next, let's turn to a BuzzFeed article, complaining about something different. This time, they're talking about the rise of Skywalker's portrayal of Rose Tico, played by Kelly Marie Tran, of course. She was a noteworthy and controversial character from the last movie because, well, everyone hated her and she was annoying and she wore a silly costume that looked like a potato sack. In addition, she had a dumb haircut and she did some very, very questionable things, like risk her life to save Finn and stopping him from risking his own life to save the Resistance. Kind of stole his thunder. I could go on all day about why she was despised by everyone here, but we don't have the time. And of course, not everyone hated Rose. The SJWs propped Rose Tico up and wanted to pretend she was the best thing ever. Not because of her character or performance, though. They just liked Rose because she was female and a minority. Identity politics at its worst. The article about this is called, People are supporting Kelly Marie Tran and criticizing how Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker used her character. Rose Tico deserved better. And right out the gate, I can see where this is going. Kelly Marie Tran was noticeably sidetracked in this new film, going from a pretty important side character in the last one to just someone in the background now who barely says anything. Rose also looked angry and frustrated and frumpy the whole time too, probably because the actress Kelly Marie Tran is sick of this Star Wars bullshit. Let's read on here anyway though and see what BuzzFeed has to say for themselves. Kelly Marie Tran won fans' hearts in Star Wars The Last Jedi as Rose Tico, a resistance mechanic who finds the strength within herself to become a hero. She broke barriers as the first Asian American woman to play a leading role in the Star Wars franchise, but the high profile part also made her the target of a harassment campaign. Tran deleted her Instagram and later eloquently spoke out on her refusal to be marginalized for her Vietnamese American identity. But in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, her character spends most of the movie on the sidelines. Well, she really should be on the sidelines. She is a mechanic, and if you've ever been to a race or NASCAR before, mechanics usually wait on the sidelines. Really, Kelly Marie Tran and Rose Tico, they were just lucky lucky to be there in the last film. And as I said, mechanics do typically stay at bases and fix the ships anyway, so.
so. This actually makes perfect sense here. Combine that with the fact that most real fans were turned off by her character before and well, it makes sense that this new movie sidetracked her here. To try and save face and move on, the only people who really pretended to like Rose Tika were SJWs like the ones working at BuzzFeed, who love to use her womanhood and Asianness to virtue signal for themselves. Also, they are still spreading this lie that some kind of harassment campaign attacked Kelly Marie Tran because she's Asian and forced her off the internet because they didn't like Rose. That's just false because there was no concerted effort there. It was just random people commenting at her. And years later, we still don't have any confirmation that those comments are what drove her off the internet. But SJWs like BuzzFeed here, they still pretend that's true and spread this unproven idea because it helps support their victim narrative. Here we have some more triggered tweets about Rose Tico. First one says, there's a lot to like and a lot to dislike in the rise of Skywalker, but no matter how you feel, can we agree Rose Tico deserves better? Not really. She already got way more attention than she deserved in the last movie. What Star Wars Rise of Skywalker did to Rose Tico is unconscionable. Kelly Marie Tran got less screen time than Dominic Monaghan's random new character. They Jar Jar Binks her because trolls bullied her off the internet. Kelly deserved better. Well, I think Kelly's already a millionaire just from doing these two movies, so I think she'll be fine. As for the unproven bullied off the internet claim, well, even if we assume that is true, it's still a very weak argument. Kelly and any actor should know the risks when getting into this public of a profession. In addition, she signed on to do a freaking Star Wars movie, the most popular franchise ever, so she should have known internet backlash was highly possible and part of taking that kind of gig. With that said, I can hardly pity her. Sure, she doesn't deserve to get the worst hate in the world, but it is to be expected in this realm. And also, being bullied off the internet isn't even that bad or hard to deal with anyway. Just delete your Twitter and Instagram apps and move on. Easy peasy, not that big a deal. Finally, we got one last rather funny SJW complaint about this new movie. This time we're looking at a tweet from Dr. Stephen W. Thrasher, cool name by the way, and he says, okay, some lighthearted non-spoiler thoughts on race in The Last Skywalker. Seems like he has the movie's name wrong. Finn finding Jenna, a fellow black decolonized, formerly colonized imperial subject who got woke. Revised my 2014 Guardian essay in which I theorized all stormtroopers are black. Okay, wow, lots of SJW words in here. And below this tweet, I kid you not, the guy's article says, Star Wars The Force Awakens is Black Lives Matter's first science fiction film. Wow, didn't think I was going to write and record that sentence today. Now we're going all the way back to 2014 and getting BLM involved. I thought that group was long gone and forgotten about. But I do think this guy tweeting has a minor point here though. It is interesting that when Finn finds another former stormtrooper in this new movie, it's another black person who was stolen from their family as a kid. But rather than assume all the stormtroopers are black from that instance, I would just chalk it up as being a coincidence and also, it just shows Disney was trying to squeeze in more minorities into this. And in addition, it's pretty obvious this supposed doctor who tweeted this, he's just obsessed with race and being black and talking about everything being colonized and imperial and getting woke, just like how every other SJW is. So I would say he's just projecting a bit here and putting his own prevalent thoughts into this when they're not there at all. And this isn't what was intended, clearly. What do you guys think about the show today? Are you surprised the SJWs are turning on this new Star Wars movie so quickly? Is it because of these reasons specifically or do you think they finally realize this franchise is dying so they're going to bail the sinking ship? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoy this video and we'll see y'all next time.